artist from Cyprus and I'm currently studying in Grey School of Art. I'm studying painting and then parallel to that I have a um, distinct passion for cinema and illustration. And what has attracted me to study art? Um, the honest answer would be I suppose it started with a natural ability to draw and then from then on that kind of developed a passion for creating images and then from that creating experiences I suppose. Um, and art, I've always seen that as quite an absurd human artifact and as soon as something is that absurd it's infinitely interesting to me. Um, and at the same time it's just, it creates a platform to discuss anything and I see artists as primarily people with interests that kind of manifest them into images or sound or craft. And it's just uh, an exciting um, realm to be in. Yeah, so I would say I work in a very figurative way and my work is very much concerned with the relationship between the figure and space and one kind of has to inform the other and looking into perceptual frameworks is what helps me kind of build that relationship. Um, but as in terms of application, I prefer to not um, kind of um, restrict myself to one way of application or one sort of color palette or one distinct painting style because this early on in my practice I feel as though it's very important to keep an open mind and keep experimenting with the material of uh, painting. So my illustrations were inspired by my uh, dual uh, heritage, uh, seeing as I'm part Lithuanian and part Cypriot, and they were very much inspired by this sort of Lithuania-Cyprus hybridity and how the experiences of those different spaces have manifested into my identity and what my memories of those places have m made of me. And so I suppose that the, the general or the larger idea was the idea of what is home and uh, where does it start and does it start from objects and from the confinement of uh, the walls of your house and then kind of expands into a, a state of mind and then it becomes about the culture and the language as well and being bilingual as well has kind of um, affected the, the artwork as well because it's a very important part of the identity of a people because both Lithuanian and Greek are very much explicitly spoken by Greeks or Lithuanians and they, they're both very attached to their language um, but now I'm currently working on again shifting from memory to the senses I'm looking more broad in, in a more broad theme the experience of cinema through the senses and kind of how they create cranial spaces and I guess cinematography is the kind of tool to do that and I'm looking more into how they discuss ontological subjects and experiences of being and that comes through the design of cinema to a very large extent. A piece of writing has also really informed uh, my current practice is, is the f one by the film theorist uh, Jennifer Barker that has reinterpreted uh, the experience of cinema as in experiencing it through the skin and through touching and the senses in general and um, so one of one example would be eraser head and repulsion which are both very much uh, texture orientated films and it's very much about the the skin being a kind of border between inside and outside and um, I thought that connection was very interesting and it makes, it, it, it adds a different dimension to the experience of cinema. Uh, something I'd like to experiment with in the future actually is 
exactly film and cinema and kind of see how I can intertwine my current practice, which is painting and cinema, and see what kind of a combination of the two can create. So definitely the medium of film is something that is um, in my mind. So for that reason, one of the artists that I'd like to collaborate with is Jean Schwankmeier, seeing as um, his work does encapsulate what I've been sort of talking about, because he does sort of stop motion animation and they're very absurdist, but they do re reappropriate objects. And I think that would have, I mean, this is obviously talking in a very ideal world because He's a very, very established artist, um, but I think it would be fascinating to work with him and see what kind of uh, images and then stop motion animation, which kind of works with found objects, uh, could create or could, what, would, what could come out of that would be really exciting. I believe the recipe for success as an artist um, First of all, academically, uh, which is the most straightforward form of a success, would be to not be stubborn and to listen to criticism um, and then to just consistently work hard. And I think if you just combine those two, academic success is uh, achievable. Uh, in terms of the quality of your work, I think, again, you have to be consistently working and if you ever let it slip through your fingers I think that's where you you might see a, a downfall and the quality of your, of your work is always depending on you being a good judge of yourself and you have to always compare yourself with okay how were you yesterday are you doing better today then keep doing what you're doing keep improving and if at any point that that doesn't that is not the case then you obviously need to change something. Now, in terms of your professional success, which is something that I've still not had to struggle, seeing as I'm still in uh, an unacademic life, uh, I do think that, um, at least I wanna go into it thinking that I won't be expecting any favors. So I will be kind of putting myself out there and, because I think that's one thing that a lot of artists fall into the trap of hiding and being incredibly selective with what they show and I think you never know what's going to stick I suppose. So I think a very important thing is to kind of cons keep consistently uh, put yourself out there either through social media or in person and slowly slowly I think the key is to kind of build a platform for yourself. So two artists that have really influenced my uh, academic experience in painting have been Nia Rauch and Benjamin Degen because uh, they have helped me burst my bubble and uh, they've helped me see painting through a different point of view and get one step closer to comprehending um, the flexibility of painting in regards to application and design. So I haven't spoken about heritage and uh, hybridity as well as identity. Uh, some of the key uh, or crucial sources of inspiration have been Greek mythology and Lithuanian folklore because they they really successfully encapsulate um, cultural attitudes and contexts as well as uh, perceptions of the people um, living in a specific landscape and surrounded by a specific uh, historical context.